This vehicle and its equipment was donated to Search and Rescue by the family and estate of a longtime SAR volunteer who recently passed away. His legacy continues to serve the community in helping locate the lost and treating the injured. We lovingly have named this vehicle in his honor with his call sign, Z1. Greetings, my name is Nathan Lawrence, and I'm a volunteer with King County Search and Rescue. Today, we're gonna to upgrade one of the legacy radios in this truck to an upgraded P25 radio of the 7510 series. First step is we're gonna be unscrewing the front face plate and then removing the radio. Now that we have the screws removed, the next step is to make sure that we have no power to the radios. So I'm turning off my house battery. That takes and de-energizes all the radios and makes it safe for us to now pull out the radio. I can then remove it from the chassis and disconnect the antenna connector and power. So next, we're gonna take our brand new faceplate for the 7510 radio remove it from the back. Faceplate should come with uh, mounting screws to go into the chassis. Next, we'll take the existing mounting screws for the 7510 radio and use it to connect to the metal bracket faceplate. In this next stage, we're gonna take the metal bracket and mount it to the radio. Programming the radio either in the field or on a bench can be easily accomplished using a USB data cable and a power source. To install the optional RMK5 kit with remote command mic, first start by ensuring there's no power to the radio. Open the transceiver by removing the top cover. Remove the rubber cover and shield cover. To gently pry the control head on the plastic tabs at the bottom of the radio. Carefully detach the control head from the transceiver. Ensure that you remove the flat cable and microphone cable by pulling straight up. Pass the separation cable's control connector and ground wire through the supplied connector o-ring and the cable hole of the front panel from the front side. Firmly slide the cable bracket in place to lock the cable inside the front panel. Note that the cable is keyed with a flat side. To ensure proper alignment of the ribbon cables, make sure that the blue section of the large ribbon is facing inwards towards the middle of the board. For the small ribbon, ensure the blue segment is facing outwards away from the middle of the board. Firmly fasten the ground wire terminal to the front panel using the supplied grounding screw. Carefully feed the two ribbons through the available slot in the chassis and connect it to the main board.
Replace the shield cover and rubber cover back on the main unit and gently close the case. While the control head is updating, do not interrupt or turn off the radio. For additional information, carefully review the included instruction manual. And then ensuring we still have DC power disconnected, I'll reconnect the DC power cable. What's great is that this new radio utilizes the same wire connection and harness as our legacy radio. Next, I'll reconnect our antenna connection. and then reinsert the radio back into the chassis. Next, we'll reconnect our microphone. And then re-energize our radio stack. We can power on and test the radio. Four, 